Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ghani and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of the live question and answer session that I did over on the Instagram platform on Monday the 25th of September. So I've got some of your questions and queries and recommendation requests that you've sent in beforehand. So I'm going to be showing you lots of lovely new fabrics from around the shop, giving you lots of ideas for things that you can sew with them as well and then answering things that you're getting a little bit stuck on too. So you will see me read some of the comments and questions that are coming in live as well, just so you've got a bit of context about what's getting chatted about live. But if you are here on YouTube and you want to contribute anything to the discussion or you want to ask a question that I can cover in a future session, then do just leave a comment below and then I can include it on my list for next time. So I'll switch over to the live recording now. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you very soon. Hi everyone, good evening. It's Monday the 26th of, no, 25th of November. November, God. wrong day, wrong month. Let's start again. It's Monday the 25th of September and here I am again. I'm on the shop floor with loads of beautiful fabrics to share with you tonight. I've got your questions that you've sent in beforehand ready, so hopefully lots of ideas and inspiration to come. Um, I don't probably don't have as many questions as I normally do this week, so um, feel free to ask and chat along as I'm showing you different things. I've got lots of new things to show you as well. And because it's coming up to the end of the month, I'll also have a new fabrics video on YouTube. Um, so that should hopefully be out on maybe like Wednesday, all being well. Um, evening all, sat with a cuppa, that sounds nice. Um, I should have brought one over, but annoyingly my little kind of cup, hot cup thing got a big crack in it. Um, so I didn't want to risk dripping anything on the fabrics. Hello from my holiday in Avermore. I hope you have a lovely holiday. So, so yeah, I do have lots of new things to show you. Um, and I've also got some sewing society clues as well for those that are interested. Not long now, a week on Wednesday. Um, we will have another two kits ready for you. So I'm going to give you a couple of clues for the next few months. Um, the fabrics that, <laughs> that are in the kits um, take up quite a lot of space. So we had um, a pretty big delivery today of fabric. Um, and those of you that have been like following me for a long time, you might remember like, or have you like seen maybe on my stories or something in the past when like the fabric comes and it's in like a massive big box that's a bit like a small garden shed. Uh, four of them came today um, <laughs> and it was all fabric for Sewing Society kits. Um, so so yeah, you guys are in for some some cosy kits, I'm telling you. Um, so that is, that is exciting albeit it's quite a lot of space issues in the meantime um but but yeah it's all good i think you're gonna love them um definitely definitely warm cozy vibes and yeah something for next week that you can really get your teeth stuck into as well which is fun um so i'm gonna start showing you some of the new fabrics but yeah there will be like a big roundup of all the new fabrics that have come in in this past month on my YouTube channel later this week. Somebody saying pretty blouse, thank you. This is the By Hand London Marie shirt. So it's got, you don't totally see them, I guess, from a distance because the pattern's quite busy, but it's got these really nice pin tucks um, at the front sort of yoke section and the back yoke section as well. And then it makes it more sort of blousy into the um, into the bodice. So the first new fabric that I'm going to show you, which comes in a couple of colourways, I have only brought one of the colourways over, um, is this one here, which is the Forest Blended Knit Fabric. So it's a polyester and cotton mix. And it's nice because it's got a lot of texture to it. So you can see it's got like little flecks. Um, it's got little flecks of like a grey, a white, and then the green as well. And the reverse of it is nice and fluffy. So it's really soft on the inside. And this would be great for cardigans and jumpers and sweaters and garments like that. So a really, really nice cozy one there. And then the other colour we've got of is like a sort of ru rusty kind of orangey colour. Um, so that is the Forest Blended Knit Fabric. All of these ones are online as well now. Um, I know sometimes I end up showing you things that aren't online yet, but these are all online. 
Um, so I'm just finding a place to put that because there's literally fabric piled up everywhere beside me right now. Everything's just so bulky and um, it takes up quite a lot of space. Okay, the next one, I've got three different colourways to show you. This is if you're looking for something maybe a bit kind of more fancier or sparkly. Um, so this is it here. Um, this is the Charcoal Glitter Lurex Viscose Jersey Fabric. So it's viscose, lurex and elastane. Um, and it's quite a lightweight jersey. Um, but as you can see, it's very sparkly and shiny. It shimmers like like a glitter ball and um, it's really nice and I think this would be gorgeous for even just like a little kind of simple top I think because it's viscose can you see how it pull out a little bit more so you can see because it's viscose it's like quite floppy and um, so I think something where it's maybe not totally fit it's something where it kind of cowls around the neck a little bit I think Freddie Parson Company have got that is it the grace top which I think is like quite a simple jersey top that's got yeah, the neckline kind of curls down a bit. I think that would look really nice in that. Um, or a sparkly kilo. Yeah, I think that would also be very beautiful and sparkly. So we've got it in three colourways. This one is the charcoal. Um, I'm going to just tuck the tag back in and then I'll get the other colourways um, as well. This one is like a kind of icy blue colour. Yeah, icy blue. Um, that was a good guess of the name. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's like a light blue colourway. It's because it's got quite a lot of lurex in it. It's just very, very sparkly. Um, then this one is more of like a sort of darker blue. So this is this is midnight, but I guess it's yeah, I guess it's like a navy. Um, and then yeah, very sparkly too. So hopefully you've got some inspiration there from the sparkleness. Um, okay, somebody's saying I've always avoided pin tucks since my exam dress, but have just got a pin tuck foot, so may have a go. I have several patterns I want to try. Oh, it sounds like maybe you had a, a bad experience with pin tucks. I actually find them really satisfying to sew. Um, maybe without the pressure of some kind of exam, maybe you'll enjoy them a little bit more. Um, could you make an Ogden from the sparkly viscose? Um, I mean, the, the Ogden, it's, this is a stretchy jersey fabric and the Ogden's designed for wovens. So I'm not sure is the answer to that one. Telling the Buttons Joni dress. Yeah, that would be lovely. That's the one that's got like a sort of twist knot at the bust, isn't it? I think that would be really nice. That's a good idea. Um, okay, the next one I wanted to show you is this one here, which we did have last winter as well, but we've got more colourways in it this time. I've only brought one over to show you. Um, this is particular one is the cherry here. So it's a lovely, nice, festive looking red. It's the Crinkle Viscose Crepe Fabric. So it's 100% viscose, 1320 a metre. And it's just got a really lovely texture to it. So although it's plain, I don't know how well the camera will pick it up in this artificial light, but um, it's just got a really lovely texture to it. And it still feels nice and soft. Sometimes cre viscose crepes can be almost like a bit more of a sort of harsher crepe or not feel quite soft. But I think that this one does still feel pretty soft. And we've got it in, we've got it in a black and a really nice sort of petrol tealy colour and a sort of ochre colour and then like a really nice kind of purpley colour as well. I think this would be good for something where the design of the garment has got a bit more detail in it so that you actually see the detail. So actually something like this that's got the pin tucks would be really nice because the pin tucks would stand out really nicely. Or is it the Tilly and the Buttons Marnie that's got those pin tucks? They go horizontally, I think, don't they? Um, or maybe like something with shearing elastic would be nice. Like maybe like a little shearing elastic cuff or something would be nice. And it would pick up details like that really, really nicely. So nice for like a little sort of fancier kind of top or blouse or something. Um, then the next two also have a bit of sparkle in them as well. Can you see the theme here of the sparkle? Um, they're both checked fabrics, absolutely beautiful colours. Um, let me see if it, hopefully the tag hasn't disappeared in here. They've not all been attached yet, so I think some of them have sort of fallen down. Sorry, the tag on that one has fallen down. Um, but the tag on this one is attached. This is like another colourway of it here. Um, so this one is the Emerald Lurex Check Cotton Fabric. So it's 98% cotton and 2% lurex. So that's like the, the little kind of shiny, subtle thread that you can see in it. Um, and yeah, so it's a woven fabric. The checks are actually woven into the fabric as well. So it means that it looks the same on both sides. 
and I would say it's like pretty lightweight. It feels nice and soft, but like a, a nice lighter weight pair of pajama bottoms would be nice. You can make a nice shirt with it. Um, so, or like a shirt dress would be nice as well. So, so yeah, that's more of a sort of kind of greeny, bluey, sort of cooler tones in that one. But then this one is very much sort of warmer tones with that lovely magenta and then the, the orange stripe as well. Um, and then the next ones, that I've got to show you, they're ones on rolls. Um, this one here, I absolutely love the bold print in this one. I think it's really nice. It also, cause it's not floral. Sometimes you can just, I can just feel like there's a lot of florals. And if you, you know, if you want something different, I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's the Zen Tangle cotton fabric, 1360 a meter is a hundred percent cotton. I would say, it's probably like slightly thicker than say like a Liberty lawn or like a really lightweight lawn, but it's probably not quite as heavy as a poplin. It's almost sort of somewhere in between. Um, so I would still class it more as like a kind of lighter weight cotton, but it's gonna be really nice to work with. It's gonna press really crisply. It's gonna hold its sort of shape and structure a little bit more. So it's not gonna sort of float and swish and kind of swirl around like a viscose would. It'll hold a bit more structure. And I think that would look absolutely stunning as maybe like, um, I guess like a sort of lighter weight jumpsuit, which I don't know, maybe you wouldn't want that this time of year, but maybe like a skirt or a shirt dress or like a little blouse or something, I think would be nice. It's gorgeous. It's um, it's like a blue color that's in the background. Um, so, so yeah, there is that one there. That is the Zen Tangle cotton fabric. And then I've got, um, oh, that was the other thing I just wanted to sort of, um, let you know about because um, I know a lot of people have been asking is that the two two of the viscose twills that we had featured in the kits this month to make the fibre mood josephine dress we now have the the bit of fabric that we had left over available so um, this one here is the navy ditzy petals viscose twill fabric so this fabric was made especially for us by our supplier in france so we like recolored the prints and sort of had them resized her specification um, and because it's a viscose twill it just feels a little bit heavier it's just got a bit more weight to it so it's really nice for this time of year for you know dresses and blouses and tops and that sort of thing so yeah navy background with those all those beautiful gorgeous colors in it and then we've also got the autumnal confetti one as well so um i'll just bring that over to show you too unfortunately they're wrapped on the roll the wrong way around um <clears throat> that's it there so some more warmer tones they are beautiful color for autumn and that one so it's a bit more of a sort of abstract kind of scattered print on that one there um and then i think that was all the new things that i brought over to show you i think everything else i've got out is in relation to answering the questions that you've sent in but i'm just going to check and see if i have missed any questions or comments or anything there um let's see any recommendations of fabric for a mile end and plateau closet core set thank you We've got so many different types of sweatshirting and loop back French terry fabrics at the moment. There's so many different combinations you could have. Um, so we do it for, for like a really cozy option here. And I'd actually brought these fabrics out in answer to another question here. So what I might do is try and find that question and then I can sort of answer it at the same time. Somebody would asked about the Lindsay sweatshirt, um, which when I tried to look that up, I think it's a Vicky Sews pattern. So if you ask that question, I'm hoping that I found the right Lindsay sweatshirt. Um, it looks like quite a structured sweatshirt that's got a collar with like a little zip opening at the neckline. And it recommends little to no stretch fabrics, but generally the samples look like they're quite structured, like they're made out of sort of thicker sweatshirting. So I've picked a few over that I think would work. And I think they would also work for the plateau um, and the mile end hoodie as well. So this one here is the plum alpine fur backed sweatshirting fabric 67 cotton 30 polyester three elastane it's basically like two fabrics so then it's kind of double-sided on one side it looks like sweatshirting fabric and then on the other side it's got this lovely really lovely cozy fluffy sort of kind of short pile fur in the back it feels amazing um, and we do have that in some other colorways as well so that would be a nice option and then we've also got this in a few colourways as well. This is a bit of a more sort of heavier weight structured sweatshirting too. 
which is really lovely and cosy. This is the turquoise marl fleecy sweatshirt fabric, which is 71 cotton, 25 polyester and four elastane. It's 18.50 a meter. And it is, it's, you can see it's got that sort of marled, marled effect. So it's not like a solid color. And then the back is really lovely and cozy and fleecy too. So, so yeah, we've got that in three other colorways as well. And then this is a fabric that we have had before, but these are new colorways. Um, and I would say this is probably like our thickest or sort of heaviest sweatshirting. And this, the, the sample of that Lindsay, Vicky Sews one, actually kind of looked like it was in a fabric very similar to this um so actually the tag had fallen off that one but i do have it on this cream colorway here so this this particular colorway is the ivory snuggly fleece back organic cotton sweatshirting fabric so it's 82 cotton and it's 18 percent recycled polyester and then it's 320 gsm which is quite high um, and then, so that's a new color, that ivory. And then this is also a new color here. I'm sorry, I can't specify the exact color, but it looks like the tag is somehow just disappeared into the depth of the bolt there. Um, but I'll, I'll use it to kind of sort of give you an idea of the thickness. So you can, oops, so you can sort of see it's, you know, it is quite structured, it's quite thick. Again, the back is really lovely, fleecy and soft. So it would also be really good for the, the closet core loungewear sets as well. Um, and then, the final one that I thought would work for that um, Vicky Sews pattern is this one here, which is the sea glass cotton double gauze fleece fabric, and it's a hundred percent cotton. Um, but it does it does have some some stretch in it. I think it's just two way. Yeah, it's just two way stretch. Um, so at ninety degrees to the selvage, it basically looks the same on both sides. So it's yeah, it's more like a kind of classic sort of fleece fabric that you would get but it's it probably has like a bit of a flatter sort of surface it doesn't it doesn't really look like sort of as bobbly in texture as as other types of fleeces that I've seen before and I, I guess maybe it's because it's cotton and um, it's really nice and that does come in other colorways as well so lots of options there and um, but other options for the for the plateau and the mile end as well the cozy colors is a popular range it comes in lots of colors too and it's got like a little fleck on it so you can have a look if you search cozy colors on the website you'll see all the different colors for that as well and um, so yeah lots of lots of options um okay helen is saying i had a dress in the lurex sparkle fabric is giving me vibes of a dress i had in the 90s as a child in a good way <laughs> that sounds awesome um, I love the sparkling materials. Yeah, my teacher told me to do pin tucks wrong, so I had to unpick them and redo them. That sounds pretty annoying. Um, I got grade 2 CSE in the end, but after so long making it, I never wore it. Oh, that's a shame. Um, the Sylvie top with the flutter sleeves and cowl neck would be nice in the glitter jersey. It does sound very nice with flutter sleeves and a cowl neck. Um, any recommendations of sweatshirting fabric to make the Jara jumper? That's what I'm thinking of making this autumn, but I have not got an overlocker. Would it be okay to sew, make with the Jara pattern? Yeah, so all of those sweatshirting ones that I just listed would also be good for the Jara pattern as well. And you can definitely just sew on a regular sewing machine. You can either use the stretchy Maraflex thread in a regular straight stitch, or you could use the regular Sew All Gutterman thread and then just put um, a stretch stitch on your machine or, or a zigzag stitch as well. And you, the, the fabrics don't fray, so, so it doesn't matter if you've not got an overlocker because they, they aren't going to fray anyway. Um, yeah, you can definitely just sew on a regular sewing machine. Any recommendations for a pattern jersey three quarter sleeve t-shirt for this time of year? Um, yeah, we do. We do have quite a lot of different pattern viscose jerseys at the moment they're like all the way at the other end of the shop um, but you can't on our website you can filter like the type of fabric that you're looking at and also the pattern that's on it as well um, so if you're struggling to find it just send me a direct message so I know who you are and I can send you a link to, to some groupings of them but yeah we do have lots of things like that on the website could you use that check with the Lurex to make a Remy Raglan yes I do I think you could I've made the Lindsay sweatshirt and it's very roomy, so it doesn't need much stretch. Cuffs come up a bit loose as a heads up. Yeah, so it sounds like it's just generally got a lot of positive ease, which is why it's saying you don't really need a fabric with stretch in it because the, the garment that you make is like generally quite oversized anyway and therefore doesn't need to stretch to go on you. Um, so I guess in theory, if you wanted it to not be quite as roomy and oversized, you could size down and use a fabric that does have a little bit more stretch in it. Um, okay, uh, 
that purple is super snuggly. I was in the shop on Saturday, so can confirm. <laughs> Very true. Yes, it is super snuggly. Thank you, Lauren. What is the plum sweatshirting fabric called? Um, the plum one was plum alpine fur backed sweatshirting fabric. So yeah, if you if you search plum fur backed, then you'll find it. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and get start getting through some of the questions that have been sent in beforehand. Actually, the first one is a little like bit of input from a YouTube comment. So when I post the lives on youtube then people who can only watch it on youtube and um, sometimes have things to contribute as well which is always interesting so i think it was a couple of weeks ago and somebody would asked a question about um knowing where like the natural waste is or where to actually measure your waste um, and was sort of asking for advice on that so then somebody on the youtube recording had said that one way to find your waste is to tie a quarter inch elastic around stretched a bit it will go to the smallest place. I'm always surprised at how high it is. I hope that helps. So maybe that's, if you're not sure where you're measuring where your waist is, that could be a good way to sort of work it out. So it's just suggesting putting like a narrower bit of elastic around your waist. Make sure it's like sort of fairly tight. And then you can just kind of, you just move around for a bit. You could like do a dance or something. And then it will like naturally go to the smallest part of your waist. Um, okay, so the next question was, do I need to line all wool skirts? How about a full circle wool skirt that is not fitted to the legs? I think if it was a full circle skirt that was not fitted to the legs, you probably could get away with it. I mean, I guess generally like the recommendation is to line it because with a wool skirt, you would, you would typically, I guess, be wearing it with tights and then wool can tend to sort of like stick to tights. I guess if there's like quite a lot of like volume in the skirt, then it's generally going to be like moving around anyway. So you, so you probably could get away without doing it in that sort of style. Okay, the next one was, I really love the fleece fabric for the belly. So that was what we used to make up that sample that is in the window there. In general, do you need to size up when using fleece or even thick knits slash sweatshirting? I would say like generally not. I mean, those types of garments are designed to be used with those kind of fabrics. So I would say like as a general rule, no, I don't think you do. Um, but it's, I, I would say it probably is always just generally worth bearing in mind that if a fabric um, suggests a certain percentage of stretch is that if you are if you're making it and you're not using something that is as stretchy as that then you might have to size up because otherwise it might be it might come up a bit smaller it might not sort of stretch enough to get on you and um, so that yeah hopefully that helps make it a bit clearer there and um, the next one was about the archer shirt somebody wanted to make it um, and it says for a size four, it'd require nearly three meters of fabric to actually end up using that much as an overestimate. Obviously it depends on the specific width of your fabric. Um, but I would say generally, no, probably for a size four, you do not need that much. Um, it depends whether it's like pattern, do you wanna do any matching or anything? Obviously that can affect how much fabric that you need. Um, but I have definitely made archers before out of plain fabric of less than two meters. Um, so if i mean generally i always say if you're ever not sure and you're like you don't really want to over buy fabric then it's always good to get your pattern prepared at the size that you're going to make it and then you can kind of mark out like what half the width of is the fat of the fabric that you're intending to buy so that you can kind of like see what it how what the layout would be like and how where you could squeeze things on because Definitely, you know, it depends on what size you're making versus the specific width of the fabric. Sometimes you can squeeze things in more than others. So, so yeah, it can be a good way to like work out exactly how much fabric to buy. And because we sell by the 10 centimeter as well, it can mean, you know, it, you can be quite flexible in how much you buy. You're not having to round up all the time. And um, just bear in mind, like you, I would never like buy on the nose, the amount of fabric I'd always give yourself, like, you know, an extra 10 centimeters just for sort of wiggle room. Um, okay, somebody's asking what pattern is your blouse. It's the By Hand London Marie shirt. Um, Hi Lauren, I really like so many of the fur backed fabrics, but is it going to be too bulky for my overlocker to cope with? What I would say if you're worried about it being too thick or bulky, is as long as that you're sewing it on your overlocker, but your overlocker's not having to cut off anything, then it's probably gonna be fine. I think from personal experience, usually the issue comes is that if you're using your overlocker for thick fabrics and you're making your overlocker cut 
the fabric as well. That's usually when things just get a little bit too much for it, or it does for mine anyway. But if you, you know, what you could do is like sew on the sewing machine first and then just finish off the edges so that you're just, so, you know, if you're like trimming off like little sort of wisps or kind of fluffy bits, then that's fine. But um, as long as you're overlocking like right on the edge of the fabric, then I, I would say like generally I think it's going to be fine. Um, can you recommend a classic shirt pattern? My favourite is definitely the Green Line Archer. I've made so many of them. I love your shop display. What is the patterns used for your shop? I've actually done a video and a blog post all about the, the window display. So that's probably the best place to look for all of the details that are in the window. Um, I'm just wondering, I love the new bunting for your display. Yes, it's, um, if you look, yeah, if you look on the blog, then it, li it links and lists all of the patterns there. Um, is the Teddy fabric difficult to sew with due to the thickness? Do you know what? It's actually not that, uh, there's a lot of air in there. Um, this is this is it here. We actually had a delivery today of mo uh, some more colorways of this. There was like a kind of purpley one that's come back into stock. This is it here. It d although it looks very lofty, it's actually actually when you like squish it and put it together, it's not really actually that thick. So I think it's generally fine. And um, I used the cozy fleece on my Singer machine and my overlocker, and they went through both just fine. Oh, that's good. And um, okay, so. The next question here was somebody wanted to do a, a binding on the linden but with the invisible binding so I guess it's like when you sew the binding on but the, you're then kind of like tucking it to the inside and the question was should I cut my binding shorter longer or the same length as the neck um, I would probably say that if you're then like folding the binding to the inside, I would say you would probably want it a bit longer just because you're going to be stretching it into like a bigger circumference than what it's there. Um, the only thing I would watch out for with doing that in the linden is that a lot of people find the linden neckline is quite open and quite wide. So then if you're folding the binding to the inside, it's going to like magnify that a little bit more. So I would just bear that in mind. Um, do you have cuffing to go with the terry fabrics? Yeah, we do have some that tone in and what I did in the blog post that's about the window display is that I sort of link them all together um, so you can see sort of like what shades we've kind of put with the different colourways. So if you check out that blog post, you'll see the links to them there. Um, okay, some people might have some comments to add to on this next question. How useful is a dressmaker's mannequin? Would What would it be beneficial for? I personally don't use a dressmaker's mannequin. I have had one in the past. I think I've been given one um, and I ended up not really using it because I just felt like it wasn't, even though I could adjust the circumference to be the same as my circumference, I still felt like it wasn't really like truly representative of my body. Um, but there are so many different types of mannequins out there that you can get and you can get ones that are where, you know, they like use technology to like scan your body and then make one that is like exactly the same shape as you. Um, or some people like customize them by like putting a brow on them and add padding to them and stuff. So there's definitely kind of things that you can do to a mannequin to make it more like your body, in which case it's going to be much more useful to, to use it to help fit things rather than having to sort of try it on and then like look in the mirror and sort of fit it yourself or you know try and find someone to help you to sort of fit things um so so yeah I mean if anybody's out there and they have a mannequin and they find it useful for particular things then maybe you could maybe you could share that and um, could you use the terry fabric for the Tasuti Berlin jacket I think as exposed seams um I'm gonna say I'm not sure on that one only because it is quite stretchy and actually it's quite unstable I just don't know whether for that Berlin jacket you would maybe want something that's got a bit more structure to it. So I'm going to I'm gonna like probably say a no for that one, sorry. Um, okay, the next one was, can you suggest a ladies shirt pattern with these components? Collar, camp or withstand, set in short sleeves, shortish body, buttonholes, pockets, optional side slits. The Cali doesn't have set in sleeves, unfortunately. So my three suggestions were... The Helen's Closet Gilbert, the Sew Over It Libby, or the Seamwork Natalie shirt. They're all like sort of fairly kind of boxy shirts that have that camp style collar. So it's not got a collar stand, it's where the collar sort of opens up. Um, and in terms of like the bodice, the bodice length, you definitely like just customise that on all of them. It would be quite easy to do. Um, 
so hopefully that helps. Um, okay, I only use my mannequin to hang my half-made garments so they don't get too creased. I never use it for fitting. I find mine useful when attaching neck bands and sleeves. Okay, good to know. Um, okay, the next one was, I'd love suggestions for a sixth form formal. I'm thinking it's like a prom. I can't see my daughter wearing a typical spaghetti strap bias cut dress as she really well wears skirts and likes a bit more coverage on her shoulders. A jumpsuit perhaps. I'm sure you and the viewers will have some brilliant suggestions. Anybody got any suggestions, please share. Um, so I was I had a little look on the fold line, so you can browse there as well. They've got like a massive jumpsuit section. Um, there's the Closet Core Joe jumpsuit. And then I also saw a McCall's one that I thought looked quite nice. It was called the McCall's Rumper M8. 203 all such catchy names and then also the soul love patterns adele jumpsuit is really nice helen who i know is watching um has made that in one of the retreats that we've done here before and it's really nice um yeah the soul love adele jumpsuit is lovely it looked really nice on you as well helen um so hopefully there's a few ideas there but yeah there, there are lots of different jumpsuit pat i think a jumpsuit's a good idea you can definitely make that look quite fancy and smart um Okay, the next one was a suggestion for corduroy fabric for the eaves and tips on sewing with corduroy slash needle choice slash stitch length, etc. So that, that's actually the eaves that are behind me here. And we used the, oh, it's fallen down here. This is our sort of more kind of thicker, chunkier cord that we use to make them. So this is the hazelnut chunky cotton corduroy fabric. It's 100% cotton, so it's not got any stretch in it. Um, and I think they look really nice. They work really lovely in that one. Um, and this does come in lots of other colorways as well, which is very nice. Now in terms of needle size, I would say probably like a size 80, which would be fine. Stitch length, when we made these ones, just a regular 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Um, and I actually found it like a lot easier than, than anticipated, I guess, to sew, because the, the eaves has got a lapped zip at the side and I was thinking like mm, how's that going to work out you know these cords are like quite chunky but actually if you just try to like not worry about it too much and just press on and just keep going it's actually fine you just treat it like normal fabric and it's I would say it's pretty easy and nice to work with um so try not to be too put off by that um I know this is a random question question for you it is a similar question from this or that on YouTube but do you prefer pdf or pa paper patterns do you like scissors or rotary cutter? Um, I prefer PDF patterns and I prefer scissors to cut things out. Um, hi Lauren, your blouse is lovely. Thank you. Um, okay, the next one was, would your bubble cord for the bodice and teddy for the sleeves slash neckband work for a cardigan? So that is, this is the bubble cord here um which is like a, again it's like a double-sided um fabric so it's got a gorgeous really fluffy fur in the back and then um this kind of it's not it's called bubble cord because i guess it's kind of got a bit of a different texture to normal cord i don't think it's got as much of a nap as normal cord Um, it just you see it just sort of reflects the light a little bit differently it does come in other colourways as well and we have actually got a delivery today, it's not on the system yet but it will be tomorrow, of the Sage one in this which I think some people were asking for it's back. Um, so yeah the question is could you combine this with, um, obviously not necessarily these colours, this bolt has like literally got a life of its own, um, with the teddy for the sleeves and the neckband. I'm going to say no, only because both fabrics have really quite different properties. This one is very stretchy and it's quite floppy and it just doesn't, it just doesn't hold its shape or structure as well. Whereas this one is a lot thicker and it's got a lot more structure to it. And I feel like the combination of the two might just be too different. I'm sorry. I don't think they would, I think they're too different to combine. I'm sorry. Um... Okay, I'm going to try making a pair of cord eaves now. They look lovely. Yeah, they are really nice. Um, it's a nice project to make. Okay, the next one was, I'm looking for shorts without elastic to wear with blouses. Also, fabric recommendations, please. So my suggestions were the Mega Nielsen Flint shorts that are quite nice. They've got just a nice sort of structured waistband. Um, you can either have like a little tie or you can have some buttonholes. And then the True Bias Lander shorts i've made them before they're really nice 
I've got an exposed button fly. And then maybe this isn't totally the look that you'd be going for. Um, but the Megan Nielsen Tanya Colots are also quite nice as well. And they've got more of a structured waistband as well. I guess in terms of fabrics, I suppose because it's like autumn winter here. I'm not sure whether maybe you're looking for like, is it, is it summery shorts or sort of wintery shorts? And sorry, I actually forgot to bring fabrics over for that one because I, when I was glancing through what to bring over, um, I, I didn't think I needed to. But but yeah, if it's more summery shorts, then the enzyme linen is really good. I've used that to make <coughs> to make the landers before and the flints actually as well. Um, and also a rami fabric would be good for those too. Um, if you wanted something that's more like a wintery one, like wintery shorts that you would wear with tights, then we do have some really lovely sort of lighter weight wool fabrics, which we typically recommend for making trousers, but you could definitely make shorts in them as well if you wanted a shorts and tights look. Um, somebody's asking, could you use cord to make ginger jeans? Yeah, I have used our stretch needle cord before to make ginger jeans um, and it worked really nicely. <coughs> I've made the flint shorts. I put extra buttons on so I could adjust the waistband easily on fat days. Sounds very practical. Great. Um, okay, the next one was, can you make a Kelly out of the Thelma quilted fabric and do you have any coming in? So, oh God, this fabric has literally developed a life of its own. Um, so this is the Thelma quilted fabric here. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I think like some fluff from these fabrics got cut in my throat. Um, we do have more of these coming. I'm currently trying to confirm the order because quite some of the colorways that we tried to reorder weren't available. So there was a bit of toying and froing, but yes, we do have more coming. Um, we've still got a little bit left from our stock, which was just sort of left over from last season. I think you probably could make the Kelly, but I don't think you'd be able to make those kind of, what are they called? It's not concertina. What are they called? Those types of pockets. The way that you make the pocket on the Kelly and it's got like those kind of little folds and you do the top stitching and stuff. It's kind of like a box pocket. I don't think that would work in this fabric. I think you just have to make like a regular flat patch pocket, which I guess would be like fairly easy to do. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, th I think that you could do it. It's not, a lot of people think that, that it's very sort of thick and bulky, but actually when you come to sew it, it's not, it, it's actually fine. Um, so, so yeah, I, generally I think you could, but just not the pockets. Um, do you think it would work to put a side pocket in the Eve trousers? I hate not having pockets in the trousers. It's just going to be awkward because that's where the zip is. I feel like maybe if you did that, you could relocate the zip to the centre back and make it an invisible zip rather than a lapped zip. And then you could put pockets in the sides. Um, it does have patch pockets on the bum, which are, I find are useful to put your phone in. Um, I'm thinking of making season of East spring top, but I need to use cotton jersey. Have you got any jersey fabric for the sewing pattern? It's for my September plans to make. I'm not familiar with that pattern, but we do have lots of different cotton jerseys in planes and we've got some prints as well. Um, so you would be able to just search cotton jersey on the website and all their different cotton jerseys would come up. That's great about the Kelly and Thelma fabric. Do you think it would need to be sized up? Um, uh, actually, the, the other thing that I think would be tricky to do with this on the Kelly is the way that the, the cuff placket is. I think maybe either you could use like a kind of contrast and just use like a plain, but a regular fabric for that. Um, or you could just change the sleeve and not not have it that type of cuff. Um, the, the reason I'm hesitating on the sizing is because I just know that the fit, I feel like for me, the fit of the sleeve on the Kelly comes up like quite snug. So potentially maybe yeah you might you might want to size up um i don't want you to quote me on that though i, th I think it's worth thinking about doing yeah um okay the next last few ones i've got jersey suggestions for the new fiber mood jumper please they didn't specify what one it was but i was thinking it could be the one that somebody actually asked me about a couple of weeks ago I think it's in their new magazine and it's kind of got like this channel up one side with ties in it and then it kind of gets like ruched up um, and I think what would work really nicely for that 
is our range of loop back jerseys. So this is the petrol loop back jersey here. It comes in lots of different colours though and um, it is medal fabric. So it's a loop back, so it's a really nice weight. Um, it feels nice and soft in the back, but can you see it's quite floppy? It moves around a lot. So I'm, I think it would take the ruching effect really nicely. Like I think it would drape and look really nice in that. So I would say that would probably be my top choice for this. The next question is actually also related to this type of fabric. Um, how good is the recovery and the loop back medal for stopping knees bagging out from crawling around? So I have made the Megan Nielsen Virginia leggings out of this fabric before. It is actually stretchier. Um, oh, like, wait a minute till I can explain this. Here's like the salvage edge heater. It is actually stretchier. Uh, wait a minute, I'm getting myself mixed up now. It is, yeah, it's stretchier up and down the way. So parallel to the salvage, it's stretchier that way than it is at 90 degrees to it. So what, what I did when I made the leggings is I cut them out so that like the the top of the legging was here and then the bottom went down like that way rather than that way i hope that makes sense so it had a greater amount of stretch i mean i wore them a lot and i don't i don't actually really ever remember them being an issue at the knees particularly i mean i guess maybe like after a few days they probably would a little bit but it wasn't like you know within an hour or something that they would be bagging out so I'm going to say, I'm going to say like generally I think they would be okay. Um, my Eve trousers didn't come with back pockets. Was it an add-on? Mm, strange. No, I think it's just like a standard thing that it comes with. They are just like re just rectangular patch pockets. Um, could you make the Wildwood Gilet out of the bubble cord? I'm not actually familiar with that one, but I am going to say yes, because generally I think the bubble cord would be good for gilets. Um, there should be two optional patch pockets for the back. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, okay, the last couple that I had, so if anybody does have any other questions, let me know now. Any fabric suggestions for the Fabric Godmother peony dress as a Christmas party dress? Um, so, I was thinking I'm going to cause a fabric avalanche here. I feel like this one's quite party-ish with all of its little sort of stars and swishes. This is actually a Fabric Godmother fabric too. It's the Celeste Black Fiscal's Crepe. Um, and I think that looks quite fun. I suppose it depends what sort of party, if it's like really glam and fancy. I probably don't have anything that's like super glam and fancy. Um, but I think this would also be quite smart as well. And I love the colour as well. It's nice and bright. Um, this is a viscose twill too. It is the magenta cheetah viscose twill fabrics, 1160 a metre. So again, because it's the viscose twill, it just, it's got just like a little bit more weight to it. But I think that's really beautiful. And Definitely bright pink magenta hat says party vibes to me. Um, so, so yeah, a few suggestions there. And then the last one was, could you show your storm cotton twill? Is it more grey than blue? So this is the storm cotton twill here. It's 100% cotton. I would say, I personally think it's more grey than blue. Um, but if you've got a very specific shade in mind, then I would always suggest that you get a little swatch um, you can either get a swatch or um, we because we sell fabric by the 10 centimetres and the smallest cut is 10 centimetres. Um, sometimes people will just order 10 centimetres as well because then you get like 10 centimetres by the width of the fabric. So it just gives you like a little bit more idea, I guess, of the handle and the sort of thickness of the fabric than like a little sort of swatch does. Um, but yeah, I, I personally think it's more grey than blue. So hopefully that helps. Um, okay, you have shown lovely fabrics tonight. Need to make a drive and pop into your shop? Please do. I'm making the peony out of a gorgeous jacquard I bought from G&G &G for my daughter's wedding. That sounds lovely. I will be making my Thayer kit soon. I wondered if people used thin silly on the bodice and how they found it. I'm hoping to make it a bit warmer for the winter wearing. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if... How much that would affect the sizing and whether maybe you might want to size up if you're going to use the thin slate because it is pretty it's pretty thick and chunky i would definitely mull that one over and um, but if anybody watching has used thin slate to make their thayer maybe they can specifically comment on that i've only ever used it for the kelly anorak before it is so good at making things warm i can remember like the first time i went outside after i'd made my kelly anorak and it was cold 
and it literally felt like I had a hot, uh, what are they called? Electric blanket wrapped around me because it was like the heat from my body was leaving me, but then it was getting bounced straight back. Like the thin slate is just so, so, so warm. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. I, I feel like something, I can hear this noise that's like, I feel like fabric's about to fall down around me, but I can't really see anything. Um, sorry, that's a bit weird. Okay. So I've answered all the questions that were sent in beforehand tonight. If any of you does have any last minute questions, then do let me know. Um, we, so yeah, today we did have another two deliveries of new fabric. Honestly, I don't think in the whole 10 years I've had the shop, there has ever been this much fabric in the shop. Like it's literally, literally piled everywhere. So please, please use us for all of your autumn and winter dressmaking plans. Um, because we've got a lot of choice and a lot of beautiful fabrics <laughs> and a lot to try and fit in. Um, so, so yeah, although there's like so many new fabrics on the website right now, there are even more coming. Um, so you can just, yeah, keep up to date in the Just Arrive section there. So yeah, as I said earlier on, I will be doing like a new fabrics roundup for the month on YouTube this week. So, so yeah, hopefully that'll be ready by Wednesday and then you can just, yeah, sort of get a bit of a roundup and see all of the fabrics up close as, as well. It can, I know it can like generally be quite overwhelming when there's just like lots of fabric listings to look at on a website. So hopefully those videos just make it a little bit more meaningful for you and it's just a bit easier to sort of get ideas of things that you can make with it. Um, any news on the filming you did? Ah, good question. I don't have any more new news than before. Um, they have told me that it will be going on air at the beginning of November. I don't actually really have any further information than that than I can tell you right now. Um, but as soon as I do have, I will share it with you. Um, the Nova coat is a good starter coat. Yeah, that's a paper cut patterns one. Have I maybe missed a previous question that that might relate to? I still love my Kelly Anorak. I know it's, it's a classic, it's a good one. Sorry, back to the Kelly with the Thelma fabric. Do you think the cuffs and pocket can be made of the unquilted version of the Thelma? Um, good question, actually. I, because we were, were going to order some of the plain fabric as well to come with our new delivery of the Thelma fabric. I've totally forgotten about that. So yeah, I think for the cuffs, you could use that, you know, for like the little placket thing. Uh, probably for the cuff, I would still use the quilted one. But it's just for like the little placket bit. Um, I would probably use the, the, the plain fabric. I think for the pockets, I feel like it would just be a bit too thin and look too flimsy. So I would probably just stick to using the actual quilted fabric, but just make it like a flat patch pocket rather than that sort of like 3D kind of sticky out one. Um, okay, what else have I missed here? Sheer fabric for a party top where you can see the top you are wearing underneath. Hope you understand. I do understand. I don't, I actually have a really good fabric for that, which I am making something with at the moment. And I'm going to do like a, like a little blog post and a kind of little sort of, tutorial on how to use that. It's it, it's it's kind of like a sort of mesh netted fabric with beautiful embroidery on it. They're in the just arrived section just now. I actually deliberately didn't want to show you in the live because I'm I want to finish what I'm making and then then be able to like show you what I've made with it. It's really nice. Um I'm trying to sew the sleeves into my Elford jacket and the pointy bit in the sleeve top is not making for a smooth line to sew. Any ideas how to sort this? I think maybe you just um you pro you're probably almost going to have to sort of like pivot a little bit. Yeah, when I made the Alford, it hadn't had that adaption to the sleeve yet. It was just straight. Um, so yeah, I think you you maybe just you have to you'll have to just sort of like make sure that the raw edges are matched up and then almost like pull everything round so that then the kind of the raw edges match up on the other side, and then maybe sew it so that you've got like the main bodice facing you as you saw, you've got it upwards so that you can make sure you don't get any tucks at that little cornery bit. What blouse pattern are you wearing? I love a puff sleeve. It's the By Hand London Marie shirt. Um, I just love the bubble cord. Can you suggest a pattern, please? So I've seen an absolutely beautiful version. Somebody made the Elford, the, the Friday Pattern Company Elford jacket with it. Um, it would also be good for like a gilet pattern as well. I think there's a new Helen's Closet gilet, which is unlined, which would also be lovely for it too. Um, 
or actually I think the Megan Nielsen Hovea would be nice as well. It's sort of just like a nice sort of loose simple jacket. Um, so a few suggestions there. It is, it is really lovely fabric. Um, well, thank you for all your questions, everyone. Um, I hope you found that all very inspiring. And, and yeah, I will see you next week. So remember, you can always watch back here on Instagram. And then tomorrow I should have it um, up on YouTube as well with the timestamp chapters of where I've asked the um, we have answered the questions that have been sent in beforehand too. So if you did ask a question, you missed it or whatever, then you can skip to that section nice and easily. Um, I've never heard of bubble cord fabric. Is that it's, that is new for me? Yes, yeah, it's, it's new, new for us this season as well. We haven't had it in before either. Um, but it is a really nice fabric. Thank you all and have a lovely evening, everybody. Thanks for your thanks. I'm off to check my Eve pattern. Yeah, I think hope, hopefully you've not accidentally chucked it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is definitely just like a nice sort of simple rectangle option that you can do for that patch pocket at the back. Um, but you should you should see the markings for it as well on your back leg piece. It'll like show you where to position it. Um, okay, so enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. <laughs>